destroy the old laws, the accustomed ways of living, inculcate new ways of thinking and speaking, in essence, introduce an entirely new language. Language is the key to the mastery of consciousness. Language can achieve what force never could. Reform the morals, reform the intellect. In this way, people who would otherwise never spend a minute on such things would become the most rabid soldiers. In the meantime, use their rules against them. The democratic process, lobbying and voting, full parliamentary participation, Behave just like the Western Democrats, accept all political parties, forge alliances where convenient. Unlike the majority of Marxists, Gramsci would make common cause with all leftists, communist and non-communist alike. Every group with a bone to pick with tradition and Christian culture was an ally. Knowingly or unknowingly, they would assist in the communist cause. Martin writes, Quote, Marxists must join with women, with the poor, with those who find certain civil laws oppressive. They must adopt different tactics for different cultures and subcultures. They must never show an inappropriate face. And in this manner, they must enter into every civil, cultural, and political, political activity in every nation, patiently leavening them all as thoroughly as yeast leavens bread. Regarding these alliances, Father James Thornton adds, in Gramsci's time, these included, among others, various anti-fascist organizations, trade unions, and social, socialist political groups. In our time, and he wrote this 20 years ago, in our time, alliances with the left would include radical feminists, extremist environmentalists, civil rights movements, anti-police associations, internationalists, ultra-liberal church groups, and so forth. Gramsci was writing in the interwar years. Christianity was already weak and foe. The Enlightenment divorced God from both the individual and reason. Nietzsche announced the death of God in the latter part of the 19th century. World War I was the crushing blow, leaving Christian Europe reeling. Gramsci spotted a wounded enemy, and he knew this is where the fatal blow to the West must be struck. Whatever was left of the Christian mind must be changed. Every individual, every group, and every class must think about life's problems without reference to God and God's laws. No Christian transcendence. At minimum, antipathy and even positive opposition to any introduction of Christian ideals. These could not be possibly be allowed in the conversation regarding the treatment and solution to the problems of modern life. I could say the same things about many libertarians. Yet who do you believe has a better understanding of human nature, of the direction where such a path leads? Antonio Gramsci or any libertarian who views the broader culture as ancillary or even irrelevant to liberty. The Christian culture is being destroyed. This we know. Who has been more successful given this path of removing Christianity? Is liberty, defined as rights in property and life, blossoming in the wreckage of this wake? Or is it the other thing? I think to ask the question is to answer it. Martin continues, all the meaning of human life and the answer to every human hope were contained within the boundaries of the visible, tangible, material world of the here and now. Limited to this material view offers the limits of meaning for us. Is it merely coincidence that the West is at the same time going through a crisis of meaning? We have no idea who we are, where we came from, or where we are going. Given that we are told to believe that we are nothing but the result of random atoms smashing together randomly, why would we? Academic institutions were already well on their way. Proud of their position as vanguards of forward-looking thinking, these new Marxist interpretations of history, law, and religion were like red meat to a hungry lion. Throw in easy-to-get-student loans, 
extend the college experience to all, and add a couple million newly indoctrinated crusaders every year to the cause. Speak of man's dignity and man's rights. Speak of these without reference to Christian transcendence that underpins these. In fact, speak of the Christian transcendence as standing in the way of these. Tim Cook of Apple gave a speech that was precisely along these lines. Man's dignity and man's rights. While finding a way to mention Muslims and Jews, he made no mention of Christianity. As Jonathan Peugeot offers, what Cook is describing is a totalizing system, a system that includes everything except Christianity. From Cook's speech, there are only two values that matter. First is total inclusivity. Second is don't oppose the system. Total inclusivity means no borders, not physical, whether for the state or your private property, no borders for mental, not for emotional, not even of your body. If you don't embrace total inclusivity, by definition, you are opposing the system. Therefore, you are to be excluded. This was Gramsci's message, and it is Cook's. Jeff Dice describes such libertarians who believe that Liberty will work when humans finally shed their stubborn old ideas about family and tribe, become purely rational free thinkers, reject the mythology of religion and faith, and give up their outdated ethnic or nationalist or cultural alliances for the new hyper-individualist creed. We need people to drop their old-fashioned sexual hang-ups and bourgeois values, except for mat materialism. And if I read that whole paragraph again, and instead of starting with the word liberty, if I started with the word communism, it would have been exactly what Cram Gramsci was after. This hyper-individualist that many libertarians have in view was precisely the type of individual Gramsci desired for his project. Hans Hoppe offers that libertarianism is logically consistent with almost any attitude toward culture and religion. He writes, logically one can be, and indeed most libertarians in fact are, hedonists, libertines, immoralists, militant enemies of religion in general, and Christianity in particular. One can be these things and still be consistent adherents of libertarian politics. Hoppe says that libertarians can be this way in theory, but liberty will not be the result. You cannot be a consistent left libertarian because the left libertarian doctrine, even if unintended, promotes statist and libertarian ends. Gramsci understood exactly that which Deist and Hoppe describe. Gramsci believed that the destruction of these traditional values would lead to communism. Many libertarians believe that destruction of these same values will lead to liberty. Who do you think knows better? Murray Rothbard would add, contemporary libertarians often assume mistakenly that individuals are bound to each other only by the nexus of market exchange. They forget that everyone is necessarily born into a family, a language, and a culture usually including an ethnic group with specific values, cultures, religious beliefs, and traditions. Rothbard offers that Gramsci's hyper-individual is not a human being, yet hyper-individual is, is the view of many contemporary libertarians. Hoppe summarizes regarding what are known as left libertarian positions from his book, Democracy, the God that Failed. The views held by left libertarians in this regard are not entirely uniform, but they typically differ little from those promoted by cultural Marxists. In other words, the cultural views of libertarians such as these cannot be differentiated from Gramsci's. This is not to say these libertarians have communism in their sights. Yet look around us today. 
Is freedom advancing or retreating? We're sitting at a time when the evidence could not be more clear. We live in a narrative. The West had a narrative. There will always be a narrative. Destroying the traditional narrative will not leave a void. A new narrative will take hold. We're seeing it on the street, kneeling, washing feet, sitting with arms raised to heaven, the sainting of a Minneapolis martyr. Once we lose our story, our narrative, our tradition, we are lost. We are easily manipulated, not having any foundation of meaning. With no foundation, we blow freely in the direction of the new, loudest narrative. Narratives are always exclusionary. And if you don't embrace the total inclusivity of this new narrative, you will be excluded. Christianity teaches one way of handling those who are excluded, those who are on the margins, love. This new narrative teaches another, and it does not bode well for liberty or life. Returning to Gramsci from Martin. Total materialism was freely, peacefully, and agreeably adopted everywhere in the name of man's dignity and rights, autonomy and freedom from outside constraints. Above all, as Gramsci had planned, this was done in the name of freedom from the laws and constraints of Christianity. Create the autonomous, completely sovereign individual, freed from all hierarchies and freed from all responsibilities. Martin continues. Good. By just that process, authored by Antonio Gramsci, has Western culture deprived itself of its lifeblood? There's only one way to fight this battle, an embrace of objective values and ethics. 